In the last two videos, I've talked about this example where I've a charged atom or charged ion going through going through a magnetic field, a one Tesla magnetic field at a velocity of 100,000 meters per second. And for the case of the hydrogen ion, I found that I found that it, it would go around in a circle that has a radius of one millimeter and for a carbon ion I found that it will go around in a radius of 12 millimeters and the reason is that carbon ion is 12 times heavier than the hydrogen ion so that when we go through the equation when the mass is multiplied by 12 we found that the radius is also multiplied by 12 the, the, the equation here um, that relates this quantity shows that the radius is actually proportional to the mass. So we can actually extend this idea to other ions. If an ion is, let's say, 20 times heavier, then the radius must also be 20 times bigger. Now this relation actually makes, makes uh, this setup quite useful because we can actually use this as a way to measure the mass of an atom. Let's see how we can set this up to do it. Okay. Suppose that we have um, this we have this magnetic field B and then um, I'm going to represent it by by these dots. If you remember from an earlier video, the dots here just mean means the tip of an arrow. Okay, so if you imagine a tip of an arrow coming towards you, it just means that the magnetic field is pointing towards you. So that's what these dots mean. Suppose that I have this or this uh, magnetic field in this region of space. Okay. Now and then I would shoot. I would shoot a positive ion. Uh, let's say maybe around here. From this point, I would shoot this positive ion in. To the magnetic field. So a positive ion is simply an atom that has lost an electron. It can it can lose more, but I'm just going to assume that I'm going to take some atoms, some elements, and somehow remove one electron from each atom, and I'll shoot that atom in. So it has. I I would only for this example I will only use atoms that has a, a single charge that has lost just one electron. So you, I shoot it in, and um, the magnetic field. I, I'm going to take one Tesla. Okay, I'm just going to carry on with my previous example. Uh, with one Tesla magnetic field, and I'm going to shoot it in with a velocity of 100, 100,000 meters per second, as before. So this, this, uh. Right. This ion, this ion would go around the circle. Okay. And as we have seen, as we have seen, if it is a hydrogen ion, if it is a hydrogen ion, it will go around in a circle whose radius is one millimeter. Radius is one millimeter. Now, if the radius of this circle is one millimeter, um, that means that if I measure, say, the distance from the center of the circle to here, this distance, okay, this distance is one millimeter. Okay. 
one millimeter. And that's for hydrogen. All right, that, that's for H plus hydrogen ion. And we have also seen that if it is a carbon ion, if it's a carbon ion, um, it would have a bigger radius because it's more massive. And in fact, because it's actually 12 times more massive, okay, the, my diagram is not to scale, I just want to show a rough idea. For the carbon ion, um, C plus, because it's 12 times more massive, the radius, uh, let me roughly from here to here, the radius is 12 millimeters. Okay, so that's our understanding from the previous results. Now, but what I can do is this um, from the formula, we know that from the previous formula, we know that the radius is, is related to the mass. So if we can measure this radius, we would, we would actually be able to calculate the mass. And this can give us a way to actually measure the mass of the atoms. Uh, let's, let's think about measuring of this radius uh, a little bit. How would we measure this radius? Well, one way to do it is to... Well, we can't actually see the atoms, but one way to do, to do it is to put some detectors along the way. I mean, these days we have lots, all sorts of digital uh, high-tech uh, ways of detecting the ions. Uh, historically, people have simply put a piece of photographic film, you know, you know, the old chemical kind of photograph photographic film, and when the ions fall on the film, it will cause a chemical reaction, like when light falls on a, on a film, and when they develop the film, they can see marks along here. So whether you use the old method or the new digital method, we can detect the position of where, where, where these ions land around here. And then, um, now before you, we, we can't see the circle, so we don't know where the center of the circle is to measure the radius from. But we know where we have injected the, the ion, and we know where the ions uh, have landed. So we can simply measure the distance from the point of injection to the point where the ions are detected. And that gives us a diameter. Okay, from there we can just divide by 2 to find the radius. So if the radius, say for this hydrogen ion circle is 1 millimeter, it just means that the diameter is 2 millimeters. For the carbon ion, if the radius is 12 millimeters, then the diameter is 24 millimeters. So let me redraw that. Um, redraw that part. If uh, I simply measure the distance from here to here, let me let me think of say this position. Let me think of this this position here as in, uh, as zero. Okay, if I think of a ruler along here, and and if I think of the scale, uh, the, the units as millimeters, then if that is zero, then this position along the ruler would be the the uh, two millimeter, the two millimeter mark, because this this diameter is two millimeters. Okay, and this is when we have um, this is when we have hydrogen hydrogen ion and for for the case of carbon ion it would be further down okay, it would be at at the 12 no let's say at, at the 24 millimeters because the radius was 12 millimeters right so this is for the carbon carbon plus okay uh, so that that's for a bigger, a bigger circle, 12 millimeter radius circle. So simply by measuring the 
this the distance from the point of injection to the point where we shoot shoot in the ion to the place where it lands, which we can detect using a film or some high tech detectors, we can just use a ruler to measure the diameter. Okay, and then we can calculate the mass of this ion, uh, whether it's hydrogen ion or carbon ion. Now, but what if it's some other ions, some unknown ions? Okay. So all we need is to shoot this in and find where it lands and measure the radius, and we can measure the diameter, and we can, in the same way, calculate the mass. Now, to see how useful this is, I've looked up, uh, I've googled for the periodic table, and I've written down some, some values uh, for the mass. The, uh, let me write this down here. Okay, I have hydrogen, of course, hydrogen, and I already know carbon. Okay, and we know the mass number uh, for hydrogen was one, for carbon was twelve. So this is uh, this is in terms of say the mass of the proton. So M here, let's write this down. M here is equal to the mass of a proton. Let me call it MP. So this is in units of MP. So the mass of, I think of the mass of hydrogen as equivalent to the mass of one proton, the mass of a carbon. It's the same as the mass of 12 protons. Um, right, let me use a proper term for this way. Let me call this, uh, we'll learn about this later. Uh, it's better to call it the atomic mass unit. The atomic mass unit is is roughly equal to the mass of a proton or a neutron. Right, it's sort of an averaged value uh, in a complicated, in a slightly complicated way. But but we'll we'll talk about this later. But for now, we can roughly take mu to be to be the mass of a proton for for this purpose. So. Hydrogen is one proton, carbon is 12 times heavier than the hydrogen. Okay, that's the idea. And if I look at nitrogen, it will be um, 14 times heavier. Oxygen would be 16 times heavier. Um, sodium, right? we eat lots of sodium every day in sodium chloride. So sodium is 23 times heavier. Um, aluminium. Okay, we use aluminium foil all the time. 27. Chlorine. Again, so we eat lots of this in sodium chloride. Not in the pure form, of course, that's poisonous. Now that's 35.5. It has this strange 0.5 thing down here, and it doesn't really mean that it has half a proton or neutron inside. Right, the point 0.5 here comes about because it's an averaged value because chlorine can have uh, atoms with slightly different number of neutrons. Okay, these are called isotopes. Again, we'll look at this uh, in much later video. So the 35.5 is an average of slightly different masses of different chlorine atoms. Um, so to be precise, okay, um, we are we are actually measuring separate atoms. So these are not separate. We don't measure average, uh, uh, we don't detect average particles here. So these are detect, detecting real particles. So I'm going to, so you won't see this directly on the periodic table. I'm just going to put down 35 and 37. So these are the two possible, uh, masses of chlorine. Okay, they don't happen in the same ratio. That's why we have that. 
35.5 just now. But this chlorine can either be 35 or 37. Um, okay. And let me just put out a few a few other examples. Iron would be 55.6 and another 0.6. So I, okay, I think I'll stop here. Okay, that that should be that should give us a, a good enough idea about how we can actually use this this setup. So so just for example, okay, um, the way I've set it up with this these values here with the one Tesla field and shooting in with this velocity of 100,000 meters per second. What we measure for this diameter, um, if I uh, if I say that this distance, this diameter, is represented by d, it's represented by d, then this distance, okay, I I can write it down. This distance here. For the hydrogen, we know is two millimeters. The d in millimeters. Uh, and for carbon, we know it's twenty-four millimeters. And if we can carry this on, all right, we know that it's just the, the distance is just twice the the diameter is just twice the radius, and and it increases in a, in proportion to to the mass number so that means for the nitrogen okay you can see that uh, carbon is 12 times heavier than the hydrogen that's why the diameter for the carbon circle is 12 times bigger than the 2 that's why you get 24 so likewise for the nitrogen is 14 times bigger so we need to take 14 times times 2 and that's 28 oxygen 16 times times 2 that's 32 Sodium 23 times times 2, that's um, 46. Aluminium 27 times 2, that would be 54. And so on. Okay, I, I shan't work out the chlorine. Right, and so on. So, so, what does this mean? That means that using this setup, suppose that, suppose that I shoot in an unknown atom. Suppose I shoot in an unknown atom. Okay, it flies around in a circle that I can't see, but using my my high tech or or old fashioned detector here, whichever you have, I detect a spot. I detect particles coming in at this position. Okay, at this position, and I look at the ruler. All right, I've got ready a ruler down here already. So I looked at it and I find that this is at the position of. Thirty-two millimeters from the point of injection. Thirty-two millimeters. So what atom is this? Well, I look at my periodic table. I know the mass number. I look at this list of values that I prepared from my previous calculation, and I see thirty-two there. Ah, this is oxygen, right? This unknown atom which I shot in was actually oxygen. So it becomes really useful if you have any unknown elements, just shoot it into this setup, measure the distance, look up your table, and there, you know what it is. Now, there is a special name for this kind of setup. Let me write that down. It is called a mass spectroscope. Mass spectroscope. And this method is called mass spectroscopy. Method of measurement. Just change the E to Y and it's a name for the method, mass spectroscopy. 